every director has his strengths and weaknesses. Except for Michael Bay. He knows what cinema is. Sometimes directors can step out of their comfort zone and to everyone's surprise create something out of the ordinary that works. Sometimes you see directors stepping out and it goes exactly as you thought. If you are only slightly familiar with Zack's work, after watching the trailer for Rebel Moon, you had to knew trouble is coming. You see, Zack's weaknesses are these small things like characters, plot and world building. You know, just the most important things about the storytelling. Rebel Moon has the worst case of and then storytelling that I have ever seen. For the two people who don't know what and then storytelling is, here is Troy Parker and the other dude to explain. Is that you come up with an idea and it's like, okay, this happens, right? And then this happens. No, 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 it should be this happens and therefore this happens. But this happens, therefore this happens. God, I see movies. And, yeah, you yeah, yeah, you see movies that you're just watching, and it's like, this happened, and then this happens, and then this happens, that's when you're in a movie just going, what the f*** am I watching this movie yeah. for? Example, Cora is sniffing manure. And then. Bad guys arrive. And then. She kills them. And then. She goes looking for a crew. And then. She finds them. Huh, and then. Gets captured by the bad guys. And then. She kills them. And then. You realize you wasted 2 hours and 50 minutes because according to Zack this is the shit version of his movie. The only twist, the only but in this story is this. I'm gonna go with ya. Okay sounds good, we are the rebellion looking for more rebels. Guys, guys. I'm opportunist. Yeah, that's great. We are the rebels and we're gonna gather all the rebels together in one place. Guys, I'm gonna betray you. That's fantastic. Let's go find more rebels. Y you are driving. That's the twist. He fucking saw DJ and Last Jedi and thought, hmm, that's good. I'm gonna use that. <laughs> Listen, Zack, if you're gonna steal, at least steal from the best. He obviously got inspired from all kinds of movies, but the funniest for me is the robot. What we got live, guys? Uh... A robot. Okay, uh, what are some other movies good as Seven Samurai and uh, Star Wars? Uh, I know, Transformers 5. Oh yeah, Michael Bay. He knows what cinema is. Oh, I, I like this one. How about this one, robot? Who is gonna voice him? I, I don't know. Who is the old fart next to him? Uh, uh, I'm sure we can get him. Of course, the best thing about this movie is in it for like 15 minutes, he does the one thing we know that these robots don't do, and then he runs into a director's cat. Uh, okay. The rest of the movie is Suicide Squad slash Transformers 5 crew setup. This shit is bizarre. I need to constantly remind myself that this is an actual movie. It feels more like a middle part of a TV show where we already know all these characters and now we see them getting ready for the finale against the fleshed out enemy about whom we know so much from the previous episodes. The funny part was when they meet the new crew member, he or she starts to do their bullshit and the rest of the crew just stands there for a couple of minutes and then he or she goes you son of a bitch i mean and that's it that's the movie <laughs> How oh, is this a movie? It, it seems like Zack made a movie only Zack understands and not even Zack likes it. If you want hot, looped up action with no sense whatsoever, just watch Sucker Punch. It's way better than this shit. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, let me fact check that. Mm, we have a uh, live action anime girl with samurai sword, historically accurate night lady with M4, and nurse shooting full auto. Okay, okay. Orcs shooting flag catapults. Yes, okay, okay. Let me just pause at a random moment. Um, yeah, this is better. I wanna see someone try to argue that. The one thing Zack is good at is action. He gave me the best self-contained Batman action scene, where every shot focuses on impact of the hit. Batman uses gadgets and the environment. The bad guys don't hold back, they don't wait for the cue to hit him, there is no retarded slow motion. This whole scene is great Batman porn. Another example of great Zack action is in this historically accurate drama 300. This is the only time I don't mind slow motion and speed ramping. Here it's used to enhance the modest action. Even with around 10 guys fighting on screen, it looks cool and epic because of use of the slow motion. It adds these poses that look like comic book pages came to life, which is great when you are adapting comic book. All of that said, Rebel Moon has the worst Zack's action since uh, his last movie. 
If you have girl fight guys, you need to make her faster than the guys, more agile, make her use gadgets, because no one is gonna buy that she is stronger than them. And yet, there is so many instances where she just straight up overpowers men. Like how? How the fuck, man? There are the usual suspects of bad fight scenes, guys wobbling, waiting for her to finish the first guy, shooting at the ground instead of her, yada yada yada. All of that retardness is implied by the fucking excessive use of slow motion. Knock it off, slow Mobius! <laughs> Sorry, dude! Even behind the scenes, the action looks better. She did all of the fight choreography, and even though it's not really good choreography, it gets even more fucked by the slow motion. Of course, all the bad guys in the movie have the aim of a fucking uh, XCOM soldier. There isn't really a single fight scene that stands out. Like what the fuck spider mutant lady? Her hands are free and she has two lightsabers. She is gonna... Yeah, stab you, what the fuck? I don't know what happened, normally he's really good with action. So, that's a cube of garbage. <laughs> The main character lady lost her family and then the bad guy adopted her, trained her, but she betrayed him. She... Uh, she is Gamora. Gamora starts as a badass warrior who hates the Empire and she ends as a badass warrior hating the Empire. When she doesn't do exposition talk, she has to tell everyone that they are the rebellion. She is retarded. Nothing about her is interesting. There was only one time when I was... Oh, oh, oh that's acting? She is acting? And that's about it. Evil man. Oh, this guy is good. Get this, he's acting all friendly and then all of a sudden, he's a crazy man. His favorite hobby is monologuing. Oh, oh, okay. The actor got pretty raped. He looked like Jack Joker, which is pretty scary and pretty cool. If you watch the behind the scenes, he's really into it. But the material is not really good. You know? He's looking for rebels. The that's his motivation. He doesn't really have any emotional investment with the other characters. Umar, expert on evil technology. He is only one who feels like a character, so of course he is basically degraded to a man bitch. Kumar in distress. But yeah, both Dario Doritos are pretty decent actors. Evil Han Solo. Can I just... Uh, you don't tell people that you are opportunist, especially people who don't know you, that you plan to betray later. He's lucky that he finds someone who is more retarded than him. If you think Evil Han Solo sounds cool, it's not. pc 3 po If you do a little editing and make it so Gamora shoots general rape, you can cut him out completely and it won't change anything. Rust is just one sentence characters. Truck McDo! Big oil love muscle guy. Katana son. Asian lady with swords. The cool guy who is in everything but you are not sure about his name. He plays general big muscle guy. It's completely acceptable to get inspired and use parts from different movies and universes to create your own. But you need to have at least one aspect of your own in the universe. Like laser swords and force in Star Wars. Or mouth heads and personal shields in Dune. Rebel Moon lacks any sorts of identity. The most original thing is the BDSM chair, which is the most effective piece of technology. See, it's a box that transforms and catches the first guy who is closest to it. It has really limited range. It's a huge box. Uh, what the fuck? They go to like 4 or 5 planets and they all look the same. There is always like a dozen of people who supposed to represent the population. Ugh, boring. None of those planets or factions are interesting. I will never forget the Harkonnen or Sardukar. That shit is fucking cool. The bad Nazi Bolsheviks, they have a fleet of these world destroying ships. They have like a dozens of those or thousands. I don't really know. The Admiral lands on the planet because they need food from the village which doesn't use robots and has population of 30 people. <laughs> It's like Darth Vader landing on Aunt Beru farm and demand most of her moisture. I don't know what is the Empire controlling, how the space battle looks, can just one of those small ships shoot the joystick guy and the whole ship is fucked? Zack needs a simple story. Story that is preferably already mapped out scene by scene with dialogue that is already written. I think all of the history, world building and the depth of these characters is only in Zack's head. The problem is he doesn't know how to show us. He can only tell us. There is no arc for these characters. There isn't really any interesting plot thread. Uh, they need a griffin guy, sword lady, a general to fight an evil fleet to save 30 people that I don't care about. This is the worst movie for Zack Snyder. 
I'm telling you, man, the Snyder Cut will fix it. There is more blood and violence. Uh, the characters and plot are lame. Nothing impossible. I have found for your matching is. It has great results, guys. If you squint your eyes. Well, don't squint on me, you damn.